Welcome to this week's real estate news. I bring two articles that he doesn't know and he brings two articles that I don't know. If this is the type of content that you like, definitely like and subscribe. I'm gonna start it off with a big building and a big company, the Lord and Taylor building is ah. now getting renovated by Amazon. And we have talked at nauseum on this news about all of this commercial real estate, what's gonna happen, all this retail, what's gonna happen, what's gonna go around. Well, Amazon is converting it. It is gonna take a while till 2025. We've talked about the challenges and they brought up the challenges because it was not built for office space. So they have to put in bathrooms and kitchens and elevators and all these things that are not normal in retail, but are normal in office space. So it's gonna be 2025. And as they said, it's a Wall Street Journal, your favorite publication. Uh, they said that the lack of windows as well posed a challenge on how they bring light into this huge structure that they're converting. So what do you think about this? I think it's a positive sign for New York City retail is the conversion, which we've talked about. Very good. But the one negative is how expensive it is to do that because you're holding a building for two years and spending all this money to convert. So I just can't get over the fact that whoever sold them that building did a great job. <laughs> yeah. Great job. What is your news article? My news article, well, I was gonna start with one of them a little more down and out. So with your discussion about- uh, return, Positivity. Return to office. Real estate industry leads on return to office in Manhattan. That's right. If you work in real estate, you're going into the office <laughs> a lot more than all of the other industries. Uh, great article that discussed, I mean, I think we've mentioned it a few times recently about how New York City, it does seem like the offices are a lot better off than other places in the country. Yeah. I mean, when you go into these office spaces, it is pretty busy. Yeah. I mean, even if it is a hybrid model or you're only going in part of the week, uh, it always seems like there's a lot of foot traffic outside and uh, a lot of busyness inside of the office. In fact, people kind of like get a lot more done because there isn't so much distractions at the office when only half the people are going in. Uh, it went through a few of the different industries that are uh, you know, doing better than others, but the real estate industry has the highest daily attendance as of September, which is 75%. 75% of real estate uh, are in there. It's financial services and law are both at about 65% and the below office attendance rating is for tech 53 percent media 52 percent and fashion accounting 42 percent yeah you don't have to be there so yeah accounting you know technology you don't have to be much. there but uh the increase in return to office as well as schools reopening has resulted in an increased subway ridership that is Which, a fact. That is a definite fact. Last week, the MTA reported that it saw its highest post-pandemic single-day total for rides on consecutive days. So, how many was that? Four million one hundred and seventy-nine in one day. Nine oh two. Yep, one day. That was Wednesday, and uh, that was another above four million one hundred uh, thousand on the day before. So consecutive days. We always want to get over that four million marker. I think pre-pandemic it was about five, so that's a lot. Uh, but I always note, and not to be negative or anything like that. Positive thinking only. But there's a <laughs> lot of people who don't pay. <laughs> and I would say a lot more people who don't pay nowadays than they did back pre-pandemic. Yeah. So you know these are paid Good. riders. I so, like to try and get as many people swipe my card well at two dollars a two dollars and 79 cents right or 90 cents two dollars and 90 cents yeah nowadays four million rides paid for in one day is i would love to know how many tourists are in dollars. there are Over actually $8 million dollars. well that's weekly senior citizens monthly things yeah. like that yeah, yeah. Good. Free ones, but uh, I... A little tidbit, side note, did you see the robot? You said you did when I mentioned it to you, but did you see the robot that I didn't is actually see in monitoring person. the... Uh, I didn't see somewhere. it in person, but it's like, it's a gigantic robot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the first of its kind. It's like 2023 and the thing is huge. 
It's going to be exciting to see how that works. Well, it's going to be very interesting how it navigates Times Square because there's so many steps in Times Square. That's what I told my buddy who sent it to me. I'm like, why put it in Times Square? Like, put it on the street or something. I'd say navigating it, it'll just be rolling around. But how is it going to actually prevent people from skipping over the turnstile? That's my question. Yeah, no, it's a good waste of money. Maybe it now. just tackles you. Personally, I think it's a. I like when New York City does that, where they they just put a lot of money into something that yields no results. Talking about yielding results, the U.S. housing starts, in other words, new home builds, hmm. reached a three-year low, which is very Ooh, interesting. Negative. No, this is actually very positive because that means the pricing is going to go up. <laughs> Surge, That's great for everybody, isn't it? Yeah. That's for, exactly what they want. They <laughs> the want the sellers. price to keep going up. Well, because everyone outside of New York City has been complaining that it's a totally different market and everything. Listen, during COVID... Anywhere outside of New York City was on fire. 60 people had open houses. Now New York City is, ironically enough, the one where people are, you know, I won't talk about my buyer that Eric loves to hear about. Hmm. U.S. housing starts. You so don't have any buyers. <laughs> <laughs> single, single family housing dropped 4.3%. Single family buildings. So single family housing would be obviously one house maybe in a subdivision. And then you have single family buildings, which would be condos are down 2% overall housing. Listen to this, overall housing starts are down 11% and permits are down 7%. So not only are permits down, but also the amount of people that are starting to build. So that means the permanent guide accepted. We see that in New York City. It's, you know, they call it a housing shortage, whatever you want to call it. I don't know how there's a housing shortage. You know, like we're miraculously a lot of people Where? born, but people talk about it all the time. There's not enough houses. There's not enough houses. But ironically enough, you're hearing people build all over the place. But you what, just said it was starting to allow. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone's talking about a housing shortage, but like, where are the people? Like, how is there a shortage? They're living somewhere. Living in their parents' place. Okay, waiting so it's single people waiting for the houses to prices to come down. Well, that's what I'm it saying. Like, you're like, oh yeah, but they're all who are these going people? up, so they can keep living in their parents' house. <laughs> who are these people though? They, or they live in rentals. So they're looking to buy. Mm. Either way, they blamed it on the easy culprits: labor and materials. There's a shortage. Da da da. That's why it's down. But I think it's because it's more expensive for labor and materials. There's not a shortage, it's just more expensive. So does it make sense for home builders? I would actually love to see, I'm not a stock market concierge or uh, concierge. concierge. That's right. What's, what's the word? Uh, money loser? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I would love to see the stock market of these home builders like Leonard, you know, these big massive uh, home builders. See what their, their pricing or their metrics oh, are at. I would have to see because, well, that's the problem is that they're... Um, because the Every, pricing has reached is the materials. Cost more, including the yeah, more, but the price more, is more thing that people talk about is converting office to uh, condo, which... And that's why I brought in an amazing news article about how expensive it is. And only companies like Amazon can afford it. Well, that's the thing. Afford it. The reason that nobody's doing that, which we've talked about hundreds of times on this podcast... Like and share and subscribe. Is because it costs too much and you don't make enough money. Yeah. So if you the home builders it. are not making enough money, then, you know, they're not going to build. Exactly. So what would be your fourth article? My fourth article. Volume in Manhattan's luxury market fell to a three year low last week and activity wasn't any better. Wow. Positive thinking. Let's go. Yeah. Eight contracts were signed for homes in the borough asking four million or more. The lowest total since the week of August 15th, 2022. The homes combined asking prices were 45 million, which was the lowest single week since the last week of July 2020, the peak of the pandemic. Well, we've been talking about how good the luxury has been, so. Now it's time to cool off. Yeah, it's like it's never gonna be just the wave getting bigger and bigger, you know? The wave has a trough and a peak. So I, I don't think it's bad. It's also the yeah, fall. Well, there it is, it hit the trough. Yeah, it's also and that was a pretty quick, September. Uh, quick drop. So, you know, back to stock market guru, you know, you'd say, oh, it hit the top. It's a flurry, flurry, flurry. And then it went all the way to the bottom. Now, probably level out there and get back up. Right? 
Well, I think the housing price for, say, under luxury is doing pretty well, comparatively. Because a lot of homes have come off the market. The ones that are doing well are the ones that don't require financing. And people buying these super luxury apartments will never take a mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, they're just... Uh, rich. It's the playground like of the rich. Here. <laughs> well, if you're looking to relocate to New York City, there's a contact form below. We can answer any questions about current housing. Obviously, if you want to send us some news articles, do that as well. Like, share, subscribe. And we will see you next, we next week with four new news articles that are top of mind and probably the ones that everyone's discussing, but they don't read the article. They just read the headline and then that's what they go with. That's what they want. They don't want you to read the article. So have a great day and we will talk to you 